Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday morning to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there this morning, having a great start to your day, a great ending to your week, great beginning to your weekend, whenever it may be that you're watching this video. I got you an update on what's going to happen weather-wise for your Friday. We'll give you all the latest and greatest information. We'll talk about the flooding risk that is ongoing across the New York City area and surrounding regions and how you guys will continue to see heavy rain throughout the next 24 hours. Um, not just New York City, but southern New England. We got gusty winds with this heavy rain, too. So we definitely got some issues out there across that region. You guys do not need any more rain, but you're going to continue to see it, unfortunately. We'll give you an update on the drought conditions across the southeast because that's becoming a, a pretty big issue. It's already been an issue throughout most of the summer, especially late summer. Uh, but this will continue to be an issue. We'll give you an update from the drought monitor um, from the National Weather Service here in this video also. We'll talk about everything. We'll even give you some updated information on that pattern change that I was speaking on a couple videos ago and how confidence is doing nothing but increasing that we are going to have a pattern changing cold front sometime late next week into next weekend. So we'll speak on that just a little bit. We'll give you an update on the tropics also. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it, and if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below so I can do that. I can pray over it, and I promise you others will pray over it also. Let's get rolling here. So we get a, we're get we getting a big push of moisture into this region right now. You see the water colors on this water vapor loop here. That indicates more moisture in the atmosphere, and you can see it right here. There is some cooler temperatures in the northeast. Uh, a little bit of dry air, but there's a lot of moisture riding just right on top of it. So, I mean, it's just falling as a, as a chilly rain out here, and at times a pretty heavy rain. So we're getting a pretty substantial push of moisture right into Long Island, the New York City region, just surrounding areas, southern New England. So this entire region right into here is getting a lot of rain. Already has received a lot of rain overnight. We'll continue to see a lot of heavy rain between now and basically the next 24 hours. All right, we'll speak on that. Uh, Florida is going to deal with some more tropical moisture down here throughout the day. That has been the theme basically the entire week, and will continue to be the theme down here. And then we got a big air, a big system right here flying across the areas of the Dakotas. This will develop into more of a line of storms and basically surge across the Dakotas, continue to surge across the Dakotas, and then eventually even into Minnesota. Uh, throughout the morning and early afternoon hours. This could pack a punch for sure. You got a marginal risk of severe storms and more storms can develop behind this. Then we'll watch as more energy continues to surge into the West Coast and some of it will move a little bit further south than what we've seen in California. We'll begin to see some action also. So that's what's going on today across the lower 48. We'll go on and get this off your screen and we'll keep rolling here. We'll take a look at radar and what's falling. Um, actually on the surface and there's that system right here flying across the Dakotas in the northern portion of the US we got an area of heavy rain concentrated heavy rain right here around the Minneapolis area points north and look at this big blob of heavy rain falling across the southern New England region and areas of the northeast uh, New York City has a flash flood warning ongoing right now this includes extreme areas of Western Long Island also. So we definitely got some issues. We all know about the drainage issues um, in New York City and uh, how things can can get bad pretty quick. I, I forgot what tropical system that was a couple years ago that flew through the region and all the subways were uh, subways were uh, flooding and it was just a huge issue. Um, let's hope nothing like that happens over the next several hours, but it's definitely a, a developing issue right now for sure. And then we got energy flying into Oregon, rain, uh, some heavy rain, no storms really, but definitely some uh, kind of rounds of light to moderate rain moving into Oregon right now. We'll, we'll see as this becomes a little bit more widespread throughout the day later today. Storm Prediction Center, really the only thing we watch for is um, eastern South Dakota, areas of Minnesota, as we'll, we'll watch for a gusty line of storms that basically basically pushes in from the southwest to the northeast throughout the day today in this region. We'll um, take a look at this a little bit later in the video. But this is really the only area, this marginal risk, level 1 out of 5. This includes, you know, down the Norfolk, um, uh, Nebraska, Sioux Falls, um, right on up. Uh, pretty much includes Minneapolis also, just about right on up to the northern portion of Minnesota. So includes Fargo, North Dakota also. So when 
5% risk, hail, 5% risk of both. Not a huge deal. Uh, but something that is a huge deal is the rainfall outlook. You know, most of the country is fine, but of course you got this small area that includes a very large population that's under a moderate risk of excessive rainfall. So that means there's at least a 40% chance of flash flooding occurring in this region, pretty much all of Long Island, all of New York City, portions of uh, the higher, basically the higher population regions of New Jersey, and also areas of southwest Connecticut. You got a slight risk that's basically surrounding that moderate risk. So you guys could see flooding also. We'll see if this upgrades to a high risk. Let's hope not because when we start to get to that, confidence is extremely high that we're going to have some big time flooding in this region. But as of now, it's a moderate risk centered right over New York City. Watches and warnings, some dense fog over Indiana, areas of Illinois, Ohio, northern Kentucky, up into southern Wisconsin. But we got the flood watches up for those areas I was just mentioning, you know, uh, basically central and northern New Jersey, southern sections of New York, of New York State, including New York City, and then the western counties of Connecticut, all of Long Island. And you even got that flash flood warning ongoing right now. Some flood watches up for southern New Mexico and then the extreme western counties of Texas and some red flag warnings up across some of the states out west. So let's talk about what could happen today across the southeast. And for you folks tuning in for the northeast, I will get to you guys. Uh, there will be a, a time stamp up if you guys want to skip ahead. But the southeast today, rainfall-wise, not a whole lot. Most of it's falling in the Gulf of Mexico. Any rain that really does fall is most likely going to be in Florida. So I would say from Jacksonville, point south, really anybody could see some downpours. Um, is it going to be comparable to the last several days? It, it's hard to tell, but you guys are definitely going to see rounds of heavy rain, especially in the central portion of the state. So if you're vacationing down in Disney World, Universal Studios, whatever it may be, uh, you're going to be dodging some rain for sure. Once again, I, I really hate it for anybody who picked this week to vacation in Florida because it has definitely been a messy week weather-wise. But another day of showers and storms throughout the day, and then it will crank up again tomorrow. The bigger story in the southeast is the drought. Uh, one of the bigger states being impacted, yes, Louisiana and Texas, but I typically talk about them in the south central time frame. But I'm talking about Mississippi, Alabama, uh, the southeast, just because drought, the drought is really escalating quickly and it will escalate quickly um over the next several days um this was updated uh, three days ago um we have an exceptional drought which is a d4 which is the worst drought conditions here across the southern and southwest sections of mississippi and then you got an extreme drought in the more bright red areas so jackson you guys are included included in this down the gulf port you guys need some rain down here in southern mississippi it's getting pretty bad that's for sure. Alabama, you know, it doesn't look that bad, but you do have some areas in an extreme drought down here near near Mobile. Um, you have a uh, you you have a severe drought, extreme drought down here in southern Alabama, and uh, it's getting dry pretty quick. I've heard some people in Alabama say it's it's getting crunchy out here, um, and I think this is going to get much worse over the next week as not a whole lot of rain is expected. You take a look at the southeast as a whole; it doesn't look too too bad. We had drought conditions that began to, to really rise here in the Tampa Bay area earlier this summer. And um, it, it's there, you still got an extreme drought, especially in the southern areas of the Tampa Bay region, uh, kind of south of Tampa Bay, basically between Tampa Bay and Clearwater. You guys are definitely in a drought right now. Hopefully some of these downpours can get to you folks. You're getting some areas where you're having a moderate drought in the Carolinas. And we've been dealing with drought conditions in Virginia for some time. In fact, it's likely going to affect the fall foliage uh, uh, severely in Virginia this year, where it was beautiful in Virginia last year. It might, it might be, it might be somewhat muted this year. The Northeast may be affected also because too much, too much lack of rain is not good, um, and then too much rain is not good too for the fall foliage. Um, both uh, cause uh, issues when it comes to those fall colors, but we're not going to get too deep into that right now. But the, bo both cause a negative impact for, for big fall weather fans, that's for sure, who like the colors. But uh, sp speaking of this rain today, uh, just a funnel of rain right into the New York City region surrounding areas. 
you know, this is getting throughout the morning, early afternoon, this this afternoon, this evening, it's still raining like cats and dogs. Um, you know, this is getting to 9 p.m., 10 p.m. We're getting after midnight at this point, it's still raining. And then more rain might get actually pushed back into New York, the New York City region, Long Island, northern New Jersey, Connecticut, as we're getting into tomorrow morning. So maybe by the time we're getting into tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, we can be done with this. But a closer look at how this unfolds today in the New York City area, of course, New York City right in here. Um, here it comes. I mean, you know, 11 a.m., lunchtime, 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. I mean, right around rush hour, it can be just absolutely unloading. I'm not talking about just rounds of light to moderate rain. Yes, in some cases that will be the case. Um, but there's going to be sometimes, uh, some cases out here, some time periods out here where it's going to be raining very heavily. And, uh, you know, maybe around the 4 to 6 p.m. time frame, that could be a time frame where it could be doing this. And I mean, this that's when the you can, you can be picking up an inch, inch and a half per hour rates out here. And that is when it can get bad. I, I would... I would hunker down in New York City throughout the day. Be careful. Of course, I, I doubt they're going to cancel work out here in the New York City area, Long Island, just because of rain. That's probably their mentality about it. But man, I, I mean, if you could take a day off, I would pick today to take the day off. That's for sure. And then more rain pushes back in for Saturday morning. The National Weather Service, between now and tomorrow early afternoon, they are going for... Um, an additional four to five inches of rain. Some of this can fall in short spurts of time, short a uh, short amount of time. You know, you could get two or three inches of this rain in like an hour, okay? And then other times it can just, you can get maybe an inch or two of rain in maybe a four to five hour period, okay? Which, you know, most people can handle. But it's when you get those kind of rounds of really heavy rain where it falls in like two to three inch per hour rates, that's when the ground can't keep up, the drainage can't keep up, the sewer, it just, it, nothing can keep up with that, okay? It's like having a summer thunderstorm just sitting over you for like an hour and a half. So uh, definitely big issues. This is how much rain, you know, wherever you are on this map, that's how much rain the National Weather Service is going for. You look at the HRRR model, um, I mean, it, I would say the HRRR model is doing pretty well. Uh, it matches up with the National Weather Service pretty well, it just, you know, and I think it's going to do better just because there is going to be pockets of those heavier rain. Now, the HRRR model isn't going to nail exactly where those pockets of heavy rain are going to be, but it shows, hey, whoever gets under those pockets of heavy rain could get another half a foot of rain, not half an inch, half a foot of rain, a lot of rain is going to fall regardless over the next 24, 30 hours in this region. Please, please be careful out here. Uh, just take some extra time. We look a little bit further up, you know, the I-95 corridor in the southern New England. A lot of rain is going to fall in Connecticut, more rain in western Mass, Rhode Island. But, you know, definitely nothing that's super concerning. But it is concerning just because you've already seen a whole lot of rain. Not a whole lot of rain up here in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and, and New York State. But another big issue with this excuse me, is the uh, winds, okay? This is winds throughout the day, this morning, getting into later this afternoon. You could have some wind gusts pushing 20 to 30 miles per hour. Now, I know that's not, you know, too crazy or anything, but with a saturated soil, it's raining very heavily. You're going to potentially have some issues with downed trees. Um, so, yeah, root system gets really weak when it gets saturated and soggy. So, please be careful with this, too. I mean, and look, as you're getting into this evening, I mean, you know, the HRRR model says, you know, maybe 30, 40 mile per hour wind gusts are possible. So, man, I'm, I'm telling you, you, you just, if, if, if there's any day to take a day off, I would use today to take it. Uh, South Central U.S., not a whole lot to speak on, guys. Kind of the same thing as yesterday. Could get an isolated downpour or two along the coastal regions of Louisiana. Um, Texas, uh, not a whole lot. Extreme. Western sections of Texas could get some rounds of, of rain a little bit later today. Uh, southern sections of, um, of New Mexico could also get some rain also. Outside of that, not a whole lot to speak on for our, for our folks out here in the south central U.S. Watching this area right here that's going to basically race across areas of uh, the Dakotas. And I want to watch this right before it moves into Canada across the U.S.-Canadian line. This could develop into a, a powerful 
uh, well, I shouldn't use that word, but a pretty nasty line of storms as it kind of moves into the northern country of Minnesota. So if you live up here in northern Minnesota, I'd watch for this line of storms later this morning into early afternoon. This could pack some gusty winds, some heavy rain. They will move. They will, they will hit you and then move on out very quickly. But I'd watch this. Is this going to make it all the way into extreme northeast areas of Minnesota? It could. Some gusty winds. But there could be some more storms that form behind this. As you can tell, these could be strong to severe. I'll watch out for these right in the heart of Minnesota. And then as we're getting into the overnight hours, these can move into the Duluth area, northern and northwest uh, Wisconsin, and then eventually move into western the western UP regions of Michigan uh, as we're waking up tomorrow morning. So it could be waking up some rumbles of thunder in northern Wisconsin, the eastern, I'm sorry, the western UP of Michigan for sure. Some rain definitely. Out west, um, more energy moving on shore from the Pacific Ocean. Um, we're getting into this evening. I think we'll be dealing with some rainy and so soggy conditions in western Oregon, southern sections of Washington State, and then some more energy could make its way or develop into Nevada, northern Nevada, central Nevada, and in northern California. As we're getting into the wee hours, the morning, tomorrow morning, we could be dealing with some heavy rain in northern California, and then we're waking up tomorrow morning. Look at the more and more blue showing up here in Canada. Um, but uh, we're waking up tomorrow morning with some soggy conditions in western Nevada, northern Nevada, uh, central California, northern California, and then some scattered rain about in the state of Oregon. So um, outside of that, everybody else is pretty quiet. Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, most of Montana, pretty quiet today. Temperatures, look at this weird little nudge. Um, and that is basically uh, where our temperature gradient is sitting, but very, very warm. Basically, all these states, basically from southern Minnesota, Iowa, eastern Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, I mean, even Alabama, Mississippi, western Tennessee, even the, the western portion of Illinois, it just is going to feel like full-fledged summer today. I mean, some places will be hotter today than their average temperature in the hottest part of summer, so... It's definitely going to be uncomfortable. It'll feel like summer. Just kick off your weekend. But the southeast has been avoiding the big time heat um, very nicely. I I'm very grateful. I live in South Carolina. It's been a pretty nice last couple of weeks, really. But cooler temperatures because of this rain and cloud cover up here in southern New England. Highs just in the upper 50s, the low 60s. And even where it's not raining, it'll be pretty nice. 60s and 70s, Great Lakes region. 60s and 70s, we go out west, uh, pretty nice, uh, but cooler than average temperatures where you got just energy that continues to flow over the Pacific Northwest, and below average temperatures just about everywhere out west for sure. Pattern change I really think is coming, guys. This is valid for next Saturday, so about eight days from now. The blue is a big trough of low pressure. The orange, red colors on your screen, which you see out west. That is high pressure. So you got a tall ridge building over the west and a trough digging down to the east. So this screams a big pattern change. This began to show up a couple days ago. The ensembles were not with it, and now all of a sudden they are. So I'm watching a big time pattern changing cold front starting sometime early. I'm sorry, sometime mid to late next week, and then it'll sweep across the rest of the central and eastern U.S. sometime late next week into next weekend. Uh, this is the GFS ensemble. This is the European ensemble. Shows something very similar. Blue over the east and then uh, orange over the west, which uh, without getting, you know, nerding out on you guys, just think of that as below average temperatures in the east, above average temperatures in the west. So if you live in the central to eastern U.S., pattern change coming. And um, I'm really thinking something is coming with this. Uh, confidence is continuing to increase. So the tropics, we got two tropical systems dancing with each other. Philippe and Rena are out here at a dance party, just, just getting their groove on out here, not really bothering a soul. They've been chilling over the same areas for, for quite some time now. This is Philippe and this is Rena. They look very, uh, they look identical out here. All right, Rena is newly formed. Philippe's been with us for quite some time. Neither one of these systems are going to bother anybody. Philippe uh, forecast to now go back out to sea after. Some model guidance is wanting to take this into Puerto Rico. Now 
going to dip southwest and take an abrupt turn north and not bother a soul. And I mean, same thing with Reno. Not bothering anybody. So for you big, for you folks that are big weather fans as far as the tropics and you're upset I haven't been giving you big updates on the tropics, well, I'm not going to talk this to death because it's not really impacting. It's not going to impact anybody. So um, they are interesting out here. They're just kind of doing their thing, but they're minding their own business. So I'm going to mind my own business also and um, not really get super detailed on them. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope y'all hope y'all guys have a great Friday. God bless all y'all, and I'll talk to you next time.